What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of a Tech once again. And today we're going to be covering the issue with Hive OS, as reported by Red Panda Mining, and the potential for malware being injected into your Hive OS images. I did as much research as I could possibly do to make sure that we have all of the answers for you on exactly what is going on. And hopefully, this will help you prevent anything happening on any of your Hive OS images. We'll get into it right after a word from our sponsor. Today's sponsor is Surfshark. Surfshark offers an industry leading encryption VPN service with over 3,200 servers in 65 different countries. Use Surfshark to access geo restricted content, including things like Netflix, to discover new shows previously unavailable to your area. I use Surfshark to access geo restricted crypto tools like Prime XBT and Binance so I can stay up to date with where the blockchain is headed on a global scale. It is available for all platforms, including Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS, and many others. Enjoy Surfshark on an unlimited amount of devices with a 30 day money back guarantee. That, along with the no logs policy and 24 7 customer support, don't hesitate to try it out. Use the referral link in the description and promo code SON OF A TECH for 83% off when signing up. Welcome back. So, if we want to hop into it right away, there is a blog uh, here at Secure Honey that covers the attack and essentially what the the exact commands that are being run, uh, what files you need to be looking for, etc. So if you're trying to troubleshoot one of your rigs and you're having issues with it not mining to your wallet and you're wondering what's going on, this may be what you want to look into. I'm going to show you exactly how to look it up and find it and then hopefully as well uh, prevent it. So first things first though, a disclaimer, I do want to make it very clear that this is not something inherently wrong as far as a backdoor in Hive OS or something along those lines. What you have going on here is a honeypot that I have confirmed with the writer of this article to be open to WAN. So to give you guys an idea, there is LAN, which is your local area network, and WAN, which is your wide area network, aka the internet. If you have SSH open to the internet on your router, via either opening the port directly, for example, port 22 would be common, then it's potential for a hacker to come in through that port, connect via SSH to your image, and then be able to deploy whatever they want. Uh, another thing there, of course, is going to be DMZ. So let's say you're a miner and a gamer and you were frustrated with those ports in Call of Duty, so you just went ahead and dmz to your PC and even though you have like Windows during the day and you're playing and then maybe you reboot and go into Hive OS at night, if DMZ is open uh, to a particular deal, you know, that's going to open everything up. They're going to be able to get in. So you really need to be taking a look at network security more than you need to necessarily be taking a look and pointing fingers at Hive OS. That's basically what I wanted to clarify. Now, I was able to get access to an infected rig thanks to the Toronto Mining Syndicate. So huge shout out to you guys. Actually, a user from there had reached out and was saying, hey, there's a huge issue with Hive OS. He's having this problem. He had built two rigs. He took them out to a client's. They were fine running at his house. As soon as he took them to the client's, it would basically start mining to a different address. Now, this can also be extra tricky because they are loading a, they're loading basically DOS, Unix 2 or whatever. Anyways, so what that means is it's kind of hidden a little bit further, but we'll show you guys how to find essentially what's happening here and if you're having the issue. So if we go into uh, Hive OS, right, and then we head on over to the rig, what we're going to want to do is just come up here and actually start the shell. And this is going to basically allow us to uh, remotely connect to the rig and then we'll be able to get into the operating system and check for the malware. Now, the malware is listed on the blog and what you're really looking for is all of these files do matter. 
Um, but what you're primarily looking for is this a.sh. The other one that you would be looking for to see if it actually is changing the wallet config would be the hiveconfigwallet.conf. But for now, what we want to do is we want, we want to confirm this rig is infected. So we're going to now just click in and wait for this hive shell to start and then we'll get connected. Okay, so at this point we are going to click in to the web link. I will leave this up because I have instructed him that he's going to just rebuild the entire image for this particular machine. And okay, so this one is not connected. Let's go ahead and make sure we get the remote access started again. Hopefully this will go through this time. As you can see, I guess we did it 30 minutes ago and 26 minutes ago just to verify everything. So an interesting note about this one, just to give you guys a heads up, essentially what has happened here is the rig has gone through a reboot. The reason it's gone through a reboot is because within the actual config files for the, or not the config files, but the actual script, it checks every 30 minutes and reboots the miner to make sure that it connects to the wallet address that is basically hijacking your rig uh, to mine for it. So right now we just got to wait for this to come back up and then once it's back online uh, we will get connected. Okay so I actually have another one on here that he uh, sent me so we're going to go ahead and go through the process of checking this one and uh, see if it's here. So I'm going to start the shell and we're gonna click in and get the shell open. Okay, and so we're in, so what we wanna do is we just want to navigate here. So we're gonna copy it out. We're gonna go back to the shell. We're gonna run a change directory command and just right click to paste from browser here. And that should get us into the bin. And then we're gonna do a find a.sh. And as you can see, a.sh is here. So this rig is infected. So if you are having the same issue and you come in and you run these commands, change directory, user slash bin, and then you do a find a.sh and it appears here, then you know it's infected. Uh, we can do a nano and read the script for you guys as well. So as you can see here we have the script and what it's doing is copying that wallet config essentially and then <laughs> we'll uh, have to <laughs> I'm sorry I'm still a 13 year old kid. So and then it goes to hive-config slash gay and then uh, essentially what it's doing is changing uh, changing that and then it's running its own Phoenix miner and you can see there that it's uh, starting the script and blah 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 so this means at this point this machine is infected so another way that you can tell and we'll go ahead and head back on over to here is if you went to the uh, settings for the rig, right? So if we click into the rig and go to the settings, the password is going to change. So this is the password that you need to uh, modify when you're starting up a new rig. Because right now, as it sits, if you have any SSH open or anything like that, the rig password is going to be set to the default and then they are going to be able to get in. When they get in, they do run a command that essentially changes the password in here. And this seems to be across the board. However, these passwords are different. So even though in the malware, he specifies that it's changing the password to, you know, this QL4M1, uh, and then if we took a look at a couple other ones, it's changing the password to some other things, right? So it's not always going to be the same password. Just make sure you come in here uh, anytime you get it built up and you change the password and then check your network to make sure that you have SSH locked down. There could be some other potential SSH entries, I suppose, uh, built into HiveOS that could be potentially uh, open, but I don't see any proof of that. 
And like I said, if we go over to here, just to make sure from Simon Bell, I said, uh, yeah, did you just leave SSH open to WAN for your honeypot? And he replied, so the HiveOS threat I wrote about recently is deployed via a weak SSH authentication. My SSH honeypot is on public network, so yes, open to WAN. The attack uses the username user and the password one, uh, which is going to be that default password uh, for HiveOS to authenticate. And then it, uh, you know, deploys the payload, which is just a script uh, that basically downloads all the files that it needs and essentially starts uh, hijacking your Hive OS image. So I said, thanks, I just wanted to confirm point of entry, have a great day, and I asked for permission, he said, sure. So I will leave a link down in the comment section below for securehoney.net. I, I think here is the deal though. So um, I do want to clarify once again, this because this was a honeypot that had SSH open to the internet, this isn't necessarily something that was wrong with HiveOS in particular. This appears to be, from what I can tell, uh, at, at least uh, objectively speaking, going to be a network security issue. You can, of course, make sure that you lock down your SSH ports, make sure you don't have DMZ turned on, that sort of thing. And then in addition to that, if we have anything else that comes up from HiveOS in particular, that specifically states, of course, that there is uh, some sort of risk built into Hive, then we'll go from there. SSH is common. It's across pretty much everything. It's what you're using to get into the shell. It's how you connect to the miner, all that sort of stuff, right? So make sure your miner's not open to, you know, the public internet and make sure that you have those ports locked down as far as remote connectivity, and then everything's going to be fine, more than likely. An extra measure there is going into the settings of all your rigs and changing the default password. You need to make sure that you're doing this because if you don't go change the default password and somebody gets in, even if they connected to like your Wi-Fi and on your local area network, they could do it from there as well. This isn't as big of a freak out. You don't need to go get rid of all your Hive OS images, nothing like that. If you're having particular weird issues with a, a, a single rig, make sure you get in, you follow the commands that I showed you guys, and then we can you can confirm basically if that rig has been compromised with that script. Uh, once again, huge shout out to Toronto Mining Syndicate for giving me access to these rigs and being able to confirm what was happening here. And yes, this has happened to uh, a few different people. So uh, once again, we'll try to go over some network security. I am moving my rigs to a new location. So I will be doing network security at the new location, meaning that I'll take that opportunity to do some tutorials on network security for you guys. That being said, I'm not a network security guy. I'm a cloud solutions guy. Uh, I can give you the basics and help you protect yourself at a very basic level. If we want to get more complicated than that, let me know if you are a network security specialist and want to do some collab stuff, that would be awesome. Thanks for watching today, guys, and I will see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this content, you can watch more by clicking this playlist up here or go ahead and subscribe.